In this video, let's discuss the I.O. constraints which are set on input ports in the design. So for this discussion, let's assume the clock period is 100 picoseconds. So the first constraint which is set on input ports is the set input delay. In case of input ports, the driving flop will be outside the partition and the receiving flop will be inside the partition. So at partition level, for doing the timing analysis from port A to FF1, you need to accurately estimate how much data part delay will be consumed outside the partition. So that is done through set input delay command. So here, by setting input delay to 40 at port A, we are basically specifying that 40 picoseconds of the clock cycle will be taken outside the partition. So we only have 60 picoseconds to satisfy the timing requirement from port A to FF1. So set input delay is a necessary constraint if we want accurate timing analysis of input paths. The second constraint which we want to set on all the input ports in our design is the set driving cell constraint. So basically for all the input ports in our design, we want to have a good estimate of what kind of cell will be driving this port A from outside the partition. That way we can get an estimate of the transition value at port A, which helps in predicting the delay and output transition for the first cell which is driven by port A. Because we know that for any cell, the delay and output transition is calculated using input transition and output load. So in the set driving cell constraint, we basically specify a reasonably strong driver cell to get a good estimate of the transition values, which again helps with the timing analysis. So these are the two main constraints which are used for input ports in the design.